in lands ravaged by mindless conflict, dwelt a legendary warrior of unprecedented might. But with the vanquishing of each foe, the warrior's purpose began to fade. The sands of time trickled through the hourglass, and our Elden Lord's taste for bloodshed was replaced by a new hunger. A hunger for prawns, crab, and even sometimes a raw meat dumpling. The Berserker armor, once symbolizing his prowess in battle, began to grow tight. So our hero's beautiful seamster, Bok, fashioned him a tire of chain and grit. Seeds of despair, however, had already been sown. And darkness threatened to consume our hero. The darkness too will fade, and new adversaries arise. Renewed by the call of battle, the Elden Lord throws down his fork and picks up his blade. With courage of old but possessing newfound girth, our hero prepares for battle. Sleepy Sheepy here. Today we're going to be looking at the Gut cosplay build. So this is Guts if he ate too much crab. And I hope you enjoyed the cinematic intro. I had a ton of fun making it. So full disclosure, I've never seen any of the show or watched any of the manga related to Gut. So you could say I'm a bit of an expert. You'd be wrong, but you could still say that. But with the minimal amount of effort that I put into researching Guts as a cosplay, apparently he uses this big sword and then sometimes a pulley crossbow. As for the armor, we went with the commoner's sweatband the cleanest chainmail that we could find, and then some dark gloves and boots since dark colors are pretty much flattering for all body types. As for the talismans, there's a couple different options. I went for the Shard of Alexander. We also have the Starlet Horn Charm, and that's a good option if you're worried about bleed buildup. We can switch that over to the Curved Sword Talisman since guard counters are not too bad with this build. We also have the Trick Mirror, because obviously we'll need that if we're invading, and the Crimson Amber Medallion. Now let's talk about the stats for this build. This is a level 90 build. We're going to be putting 50 points into Vigor, 31 into Strength, so we can one-hand the Guts Greatsword, and then 24 into Arcane, since we are bleed infused using that. And you'll note that we are going to be heavy rolling and we are going to have 39 poise. So what this build lacks in skill expression, mobility, poise, damage output, and versatility, it definitely makes up for in equip load. And I know what you're thinking, you probably put zero effort into this, but I guarantee you I put hundreds if not thousands of milliseconds of theory crafting into this build. So it's going to be pretty good. So beyond the obvious benefits of running a build like this, we'll talk about some of the nice things that we have going for us. So one of them is going to be the crouch poke into the pulley crossbow true combo. And since we are using bleed bolts, that's going to be a potentially strong option we have available. Also, when you are heavy rolling, you do get this interesting block cancel that comes with a back step. So if you reverse back step and then block, or just regular back step and then block, you can cancel the back step at any point. So that can create some interesting movement and just be a little bit more fun and a good way to kind of surprise your opponent with a weirder play style than is normally available with medium roll. That pretty much covers all the basics about this beast of a build. If you have any questions, definitely let me know. And if you wouldn't mind considering subscribing, I'd definitely appreciate it. But yeah, that's all I've got to say. So it's off to the races with this phenomenal build. All right, so jumping into this first invasion with this absolute powerhouse of a character, we're going to be playing against a Runark host. And this player definitely knows a thing or two about PvP. And I mean literally like one or two things. You can see that they're not running any type of weapon and they mostly just have a shield that they're holding up and hoping that their mage will do the rest. So what we do is we heavy roll into a nice poke and true combo that with our pulley crossbow and come out with the W against this mage very quickly. And them running very low health and having virtually no robustness, which is gonna be the stat that allows you to have a higher bleed bar, means that we're gonna bleed them very quickly and they're not gonna be too much of a factor. Now this blue comes into the world and we get a nice prediction parry after they roll just with our hard swap to the parry shield and then hard swap back over to the Guts Greatsword and that's going to be a nice kind of post because 
we'll be getting two hits during that repost, which means extra bleed buildup, and we do get the bleed proc on the last hit. Now, at this point, I wasn't totally sure where the host went. I'm not super familiar with this area, but eventually I did kind of wander around, look at the map, and figure out that they had gone up to the top of the tower. So we're going to skip ahead a little bit in just a moment here. And at this point, I also realized that they did have their friend sign put down. So they resummoned that mage from earlier, and now we're kind of climbing up the ladder here into what we can believe is going to be a dangerous situation. So we eat some crab, it's always good to eat a little extra crab, and we go ahead and take a swig of our flask, just make sure we're nice and topped off with health, and we're going to be kind of looking out for the surprise attack. Now fortunately there's absolutely no surprise attack waiting for us, so we're able to get a couple quick hits in, but at this point the mage does come back into the world, and here you can see the kind of issues associated with having 39 poise and being heavy rolling so you know a lot of damage comes our way fortunately we're able to land lion's claw and get a nice hit on the mage here and then before they're able to cast their final spell they are kind of deleted from the world again and it's just a one-on-one -on -one with the host and since we are going to be going for one-on-one -on -one with the host what better ash of war to use than the butt slam so we go for the hard swap getting hit multiple times along the way hyper armor through another hit and we do get the nice butt slam for the victory so a nice invasion there uh, things went better than could be expected and we have a little bit of exalted flesh to celebrate so moving on to our next invasion we have a 2v1 and this group is going to be fairly passive they're running lightning builds in the water so my goal is to try to bait them off the water and into kind of flat land where they won't get that little extra lightning damage and they won't get that kind of spread lightning effect that comes out when the lightning hits the water so i'm baiting them using the pulley crossbow seeing if i can get a little bit of chip damage as well as some blood loss buildup and here we're able to fat roll into a crouch poke and go for a nice delayed heavy attack which gets the roll catch on the phantom and the rune arc host is now going for a number of attacks with the brick hammers so i do like seeing the brick hammers they're not a weapon you see all the time they're uh, more fun than you know just a, a thrusting sword or two and they're a little bit slower which is going to be beneficial for my build and here we do get the roll catch with the crouch poke and we edge walk and slightly run off into the distance so we get a little bit tired so we take our breath and we move on to the next invasion so this one is also going to be a 2v1 and this one is a little bit more challenging than the last one we do have a player that's just kind of hanging out with the bolt of grand sacks and we go for a nice hit with play crossbow and follow that up with a running heavy the running heavy has a lot of forward momentum which is great for a build which is on the slower side and then while our opponent with the bolt of grand sacks is in their ash of war animation we're able to get the bleed proc which does knock them out of it however they do have enough hyper armor to resist a running heavy attack and here they do manage to escape with just a fraction of their hp left and we're kind of in a bad spot here where we need to either decide to run or heavy roll away Heavy rolling is very difficult to deal with just because if you go for a heavy roll you have almost no distance which means your opponent can basically just keep swinging their sword and poise break you at the end of your heavy roll and you won't be able to heavy roll again fast enough so we do get a little bit of a nice kill against the phantom and we edge walk into a rock and get a nice close-up on our beautiful face so moving on to the next invasion we have another 2v1 and we're going to be seeing a lot of 2v1s I found 3v1s with this build to be a little bit difficult. It's definitely not the fault of the build. The build is perfect, but uh, me being somewhat of a bad player, it just is a little bit difficult for me. So 3v1s were not too common, but 2v1s were more common, at least with the success that I found with this build. So we do have some bats in the mix. They're doing quite a bit of a uh, good job with distracting these players, and we get the nice... Uh, true combo there with the crouch poke and then the pulley crossbow and then we follow that up with the just light attack with the guts great sword and that was enough to take care of that phantom they kind of just kept hitting that r1 button and they really needed to back off and heal and now it's just a one-on-one -on -one with a player that also enjoys the heavy roll so uh, a pleasure to see that and we can kind of see uh what a challenge it is for the less initiated players to use heavy roll obviously it's a great choice for, you know, someone like the gut cosplay, but, you know, 
for a mage, maybe not. So they switch over to Rivers of Blood. Uh, we back off a little bit, just kind of adjust our talisman so we're less likely to get the bleed, bleed proc. And really quick attacks that do a lot of poise damage were problematic for this build. But eventually we do get the guard counter. And I did like the guard counter because it put you in a position where you could become offensive very quickly and being able to become offensive very quickly was absolutely helpful for this particular build and here we're able to get a couple just nice attacks where we get a jumping neutral and then follow it up with a chase down and a running light attack is going to be enough to catch this player here they're playing uh definitely a little bit more defensively now they are going for their ash of war which isn't a bad choice but we're playing pretty patiently now we don't need to rush into things and we take the hyper armor and utilize the ground slam for the the finish so normally that would have been a poise break but in this scenario ground slam does get quite a lot of hyper armor so although the aoe is not that large if you get somebody going for a nice slow attack it can be a good way to get the finish so next up we have another 2v1 and this is going to be in one of miyazaki's famous poison swamp so quite a few of these in elden ring we love them all equally uh rot lake is going to be you know uh, among some people's favorites but for me, you know, all poison is great and we love to see it on the ground. So we get rid of the first opponent pretty quickly and we switch over to our shield just with a hard swap. We're really looking for some parries, but we're not really finding any luck with the attacks that our opponent's going for. So we try to just roll the dragon's claw and find a good time to attack. One thing that I did have a problem with frequently while using a pulley crossbow in the offhand is that the L2 button no longer is connected to your Ash of War, it's actually connected to your secondary bolt choice. So that can be an issue if you're frequently going for Ashes of War while having an offhand pulley crossbow, you need to two-hand your weapon. And that was something that tripped me up a number of times since I'm not really a pulley crossbow enjoyer but for this build it was absolutely necessary and you know once I kind of got the hang of getting ground slam in the mix or lion's claw for that matter it worked out pretty well so this is just a quick invasion showing what can happen while you're heavy rolling uh, obviously a skill issue here I rolled into the corner got poised broken by pretty much every hit and you know, it was just too much for me. So uh, I felt like it was necessary to include invasions like that in the showcase, just so you might know what you're up against when you encounter some mages while running a build like this. So this next invasion is gonna be fairly quick with the first player and we're able to kind of back off a little bit, reset to neutral. And now we're just gonna fish for some parries because Honestly, it's fun to fish for parries, and when you're running a build like this, why not? You know, you're here to have a good time, your gut from the show or whatever it is, and, you know, we'll just hop up onto the elevator, grab the repost, or not. It doesn't really matter, we're just here to have a nice time. So, this player starts dead angling their attacks, but misses me in the kind of effort, and then starts running back towards the Site of Grace, probably to resummon their Phantom, but they take a wrong turn, I try to block them off, and just go for some chip damage with the shield, bait them into some aggression, and eventually we will see them go for the quintessential Moonvale Ash of War. This time we do get the Repost, and we come out with the W against a Rune Arc Host with one of the most overpowered, absurd builds of all time. So again, we'll celebrate with a little bit of Boiled Crab, and continue on our way. So so moving on to the next invasion, we're going to have a 2v1 at the top of some cliffs in the kind of like Mogwin Palace area. And we will get a little backup for this invasion, which is really nice. So we have one of the practitioners of the L2 arts hanging out in the back and going for a lot of Stormblade. So we use some cover from the rocks and we also get some doggos that come into the mix, which are really helpful for this phantom, which is using a build that is very deadly against heavy roll. The worst type of build you can encounter is something that delivers uh, very quick attacks uh, because you're not going to be able to roll away because you're heavy rolling and it's going to poise break you every single time because you have 39 poise. So having the doggos come in and help us out a little bit was huge and now we can kind of go after the phantom here or the host rather and we just get a nice cheeky crouch poke and we can slow walk away because we have done such a good job. So moving on to our next invasion, we are going to see a co-invader for this one. So this is Cranky, I believe. Cranky is somebody that sometimes hangs out in our, my Twitch chat and is just a, a great player, awesome person, and uh, I appreciate them very much. So we have some PvE to help us out in the beginning here, and we separate the host from the Phantom fairly early just with this PvE, and that's going to really be... Uh, 
big determining factor for this. So here we hyper armor through an attack and we get the lion's claw finish. So really hyper armor is going to be extremely important when running a heavy roll build. And the fact that you have that option with the guts great sword is really nice. So, you know, using your ash of war to just kind of power through some incoming attacks is going to be a pretty nice way to run this setup and will allow you the chance to actually succeed. So we do get a nice running heavy, and here we're just kind of playing it patiently. We don't want to get caught up in too many of the light attacks from the sword since it is going to poise break us every time, and we're not going to be able to roll away with the distance necessary to kind of get out of that chain of attacks. So right about now, we should be seeing our co-invader come in, and I think they were just kind of in sheer awe of the phenomenal build crafting here when they came in. So we won't see them actually attack the host. We'll see that they're just going to kind of hang out and uh, let this kind of 1v1 play out. So here we do get the notification that the invader is in the world. We go for a nice fully charged heavy, hoping to kind of surprise our opponent. And we don't actually get that to connect, but while they go for some buffs, we are able to get just a, a running heavy and get that bleed build up coming on. So we know that they're pretty close to bled at this point. We can trade a little bit with the hyper armor of the crouch poke and we go for that fully charged heavy here we do get it to connect follow it up with a nice running heavy that is going to have that nice forward momentum and then one final crouch poke is going to do it and here we get the kind of celebration from our co-invader so lovely to see that and just kind of a happy moment there Moving on, we are going to have a 3v1 that functions a little bit more as a 2v1. So we see that there are three players in this world, and we don't want to be too aggressive. So the blue's coming in hot. The phantom is kind of hanging back a bit, and the host is also hanging back a little bit. So we have a straight sword from the blue, and that's going to be a weapon that is potentially problematic just with its speed and potential to poise break us and the fact that we are heavy rolling so we're trying to bait them into a bit of aggression also avoid some of the madness snipes coming from the host and the phantom there is really just hanging out so we love that energy we're all for it and we've gotten a little bit of chip bleed build up with the pulley crossbow and the blue doesn't feel the need to heal so we love that uh, we're just gonna keep on chipping away and see if we can land some hits so at this point, they do actually heal, and we need to get a little bit of aggressive. So we are going for more of those hyper armor trades that I talked about earlier, and then just a running light is going to be enough to grab them. Also, you will note that I'm not rolling unless I absolutely have to. We don't want our opponents to know that we are heavy rolling until we kind of have to, you know, for the iframe. So if we can just kind of back off with running away rather than actually rolling away, because rolling away will be slower than... Uh, actually just running as long as we didn't get, don't get poise broken too much in the process. So, you know, that was kind of one thing that I learned throughout the process of this build is rolling as little as possible is going to be great. And here we can see just the continuous stun lock potential of something like a dagger because we're going to get poise broken every single time and rolling is going to be slow. So that means that we're not going to kind of travel the distance we need to to get out of range of their next hit. But we do get the crouch poke into pulley uh Pulley crossbow true combo, and then just one more hit. And we can just uh, appreciate the Phantom, who was, you know, just kind of there for the entertainment. And we also just, you know, really love to see it. So moving on to our next invasion, I actually invaded uh, another friend from Twitch. So Heartbreaker Jaker here is running a... Uh, fat build as well so we really appreciated seeing that we can see them heavy rolling away but they're maybe not as practiced as i am at this point so they go ahead and heal back off a little bit and just kind of enjoy the fight with this other phantom in the world and we will see the host coming in and here we go for a trade definitely not the way to go with the stamp uppercut and we do get the bleed proc there which knocks them out of their next attack and here i was hoping to roll behind them but with the lack of roll distance on heavy roll it wasn't going to work out so well and as they go for the honorable fan dagger finish we decide to go for the crouch poke and pulley crossbow and we do manage to come out on top there so at this point uh we do see jaker switching over to the non-heavy rolling build can't blame him there it's definitely a pretty solid choice they go for a sneaky kill from behind but it's not enough those iframes during the heavy roll are phenomenal and they're not able to deliver that hit so 
we're going to be chasing down the host here. And Jaker is, you know, going for some cheeky hits, but he's not really fully aggressing. We can see some of the blocking nods to just kind of acknowledge that we're having a good time here. We're just here to have fun, really. And the host does go for a heal. We can kind of punish that with a couple crouch pokes. Uh, we will be doing some wave dashing. That is going to be a good move when you're running a colossal sword. But also really mixing up your attacks is going to be helpful too. So we do get the anti-air with the running heavy. And we're also going for some additional chip damage with pulley crossbow. And there the wave dashing does pay off. We get the applause from Jaker, which was uh, really just heartwarming overall. And we move on to our next invasion. So this is just going to be the end of a 2v1 we had a host that really just ran around a pillar for a long period of time so i decided to cut that footage i hope you don't mind but we do have the blue coming in going for some zero fp moon veil attacks or maybe just uchi katana attacks it's, it's unclear at this point but we do get one hit in there at about uh, a little bit under half health so we start chasing them down going for a little bit of wave dashing we don't get our hits to connect but we do get a nice estus punish and we do get that additional blood loss build up we're getting hit from behind which means we're getting additional stun locks but we go for a double heavy roll we manage to crouch poke our opponent and then they just kind of keep mashing out of stun so we're able to punish them with our hyper armor and just superior damage output so uh, a nice 2p 2v1 right there and we can move on to our next invasion so i also ran braggart's roar as an ash of war and i found that to be not so bad but i did enjoy ground slam just a little bit more and Lion's Claw had the damage output that was phenomenal. So one of the benefits of Braggart's Roar is the heavy attack has insane hyper armor. So really using that hyper armor to an advantage can be very helpful to surprise our opponent. And we are able to get a couple crouch pokes to just roll catch our opponent there and turn this into a one-on-one. -on -one. And we are seeing the Bloodhound step usage from our opponent here. So that's going to be uh, somewhat problematic for a heavy roll build, but we're really going for trade. So obviously we can't trade into a blood loss proc that will stun you every time, but we do get the roll catch with the crouch poke and we celebrate again with a little bit of exalted flesh. So always good to kind of keep your calorie intake topped off and move on to the next one. So here we do have another 2v1 and we have a light rolling player with dual thrusting swords. So again, uh, a difficult build to handle. And this is going to be the final invasion of the showcase. So we will note that as we hard swap over to our shield, we'll actually be medium rolling. And I felt pretty bad about that, but the number of parries that we got in this particular showcase or, or this particular invasion just felt like I should include it, but that's why I put it last. So uh, a little bit of breaking the cosplay for this particular invasion. To be honest, I didn't even realize just because I'm so used to medium rolling, but we are going to be trying to bait these opponents into a little bit of aggression and really be using these tombstones as uh, a way to block incoming spells or moon veil from the phantom here so here we can see i do get a medium roll or two in it's extremely helpful i missed it so much and we do get the hard swap repost for the guts great sword so we're back to heavy rolling we haven't quite finished off our opponent we go for some shots with the pulley crossbow hoping to just get that last bit of hp and the faster they run away the more health they get back since they are running regen but just a jumpy light attack is going to be enough that comes out a little bit faster than i think they were expecting and i think the incline like the hill that we were on was pretty helpful so we have somebody going for Moon Veil, which means we're going to be going for a hard swap parry or two. So we go for a chase down, uh, some time passes, and, you know, we're able to land a couple hits here or there, but nothing too significant. We do land a crouch poke, and we pull out our pulley crossbow. It's not going to be enough to really get the blood loss proc and finish the invasion here. So we do get a nice heavy roll to dodge that incoming damage. We switch over to our offhand, or main hand shield, rather. Uh, take a couple hits in the process, go for a heal just so we don't die and then take the l2 turn that into a repost and come out with the w again against these players oh not quite actually so um, they are still alive i definitely thought they died from that but they're able to roll away just a little bit we do land a jumping attack and then some pve comes in clutch as they kind of fly overhead and just uh, appreciate our our lovely build here all right, so moving on to the dual portion of the showcase, we are going to be seeing some of the block canceling with the back steps. We're also going to be seeing just about the same three or four players the entire time. Dueling at level 90 is a shallow pool, and we didn't have too many options. Also, it's worth noting that all of these players definitely killed me during the process of the, uh, the dueling portion. So we aren't going to be looking at those duels in particular, but it's worth noting that, uh, you know, while we were able to kind of 
get some tricks up our sleeve and go for some weird movement, which is really all you can rely on when you're running a build like this. The uh, players, I don't think, were too thrilled to play against this build. Uh, the fact that it was bleed and fat rolling, I, I just, I don't think it, everyone enjoyed it as much as I did. So uh, we did see some point downs, definitely. Uh, some people uh, did some Erd Tree heals, which I thought was hilarious. Uh, just a, a number of funny things we encountered. So this player was one of the players, I think, that pointed me down when they won a duel. And here we see a number of different tactics here. We're able to hyper armor through their attacks with the Arumi and go for, uh, you know, just a, a running attack. And here we get a really nice free aim with the pulley crossbow and do manage to get that last bit of HP. So that might have been kind of the uh, turning point when they thought this was funny and then they thought they hated it. So. Uh, just something to note there. Moving on to our next one, we actually did encounter a player with the fully gold emblem of the arena. They were running a, kind of an interesting build, so definitely bleed oriented. They have the spike shield as well as a bleed infused iron cleaver, and they are going to be running the... Um, shield bash, Ash of War on their shield, so that's going to be something that's a little bit scary. It's going to prevent pretty much all the damage that we're able to send their way and they are going to get some bleed build up on us so we do need to worry about that you can see usage of the ballast but we eventually do get our bleed proc which is going to be enough to really get them into low health range and then just kind of a cheeky running light that's dead angled a little bit was enough to get the last bit of hp so we didn't have to go for the pulley crossbow finish but it certainly was on my mind moving on we have a player that was light rolling and using some incantations the benefit of their build is they have very low robustness which means that we're going to be able to proc bleed much more easily than somebody running just kind of normal heavier armor and they're going for kind of a chaotic play style definitely trying to bait me into a chain of catch flames but we're able to hit them with the play crossbow and then crouch poke just one final time and catch them for the kill so a nice finish there and it wasn't uh too much of a challenge but that type of build could definitely kind of just stun lock me over and over and over again with the catch flame and I would have no way of getting out of it since my rolls are so short and slow. Uh, moving on we have uh, the same player from earlier and again we'll be going for a lot of the block cancels just because I felt like that was one of the benefits of running a you know heavy roll build honestly is you don't have access to that if you're light rolling or medium rolling so you should really take uh take advantage of that as much as possible so we're going for some chip bleed build up with the pulley crossbow then we switch over to the two-handed move set we get the blood loss proc and we go for a running heavy to try and catch the roll however they do switch over to something that has a ton of hyper armor so we just back off and go for the pulley crossbow again and here we're just trying to play a little bit chaotically and just time our crouch with their roll and we do get the roll catch with the crouch poke so uh again just a <laughs> another kind of fun duel uh the same player again you know i played this player uh, so many times uh, while i was trying to get some clips for this build so here we do get that kind of uh back step followed up by the crowd or the uh, block cancel and i'm not totally sure how well it worked in terms of confusing especially with how much i used it but i feel like it did bait them into attacks sometimes and it did mess up their spacing a little bit so uh, you know, it's, it's worth noting that it is kind of just a, a fun element of that particular setup and block canceling on heavy rolling I feel like is just a kind of a neat mechanic that I'm not sure if there's really any, you know, high level application of it, but you know, if you did switch to a heavy roll build in the middle of a duel and then, you know, block cancel once for a finish or something, just so there's that added benefit of surprise with kind of like micro spacing, that can be an interesting thing to do. I don't know. It would be uh, it'd be fun to just see players try to incorporate that. I would love to see a tournament where everybody was heavy rolling and just, you know, kind of see what happens. So we are able to dodge that kind of incoming ash of war. It's not too scary just with the fact that it's very predictable with the timing especially if you invade a lot so even though we have kind of that short window of iframes and that short travel distance we're able to just kind of avoid that ash of war and then go for the block cancel into a nice light attack that catches our opponent out of the air so we are going to be playing against this player again with the iron cleaver and the spike shield we kind of know their play style now so we're going to be a little bit more prepared to avoid the bleed proc and 
just play kind of patiently. They also have Spinning Slash on the Ash of War for the Iron Cleaver, so if we see them two-hand that weapon, we need to be very worried about that. The low poise that we're running is gonna make that particular Ash of War very strong against us. So we're going for some Crouch Pokes and get that Roll Catch with one. And here we do see some of the heavy attacks have just a ton of forward momentum, but we're able to dodge that. And then go for the Pulley Crossbow with just a little bit of chip damage. We do see the Blood Loss uh, with the Iron Cleaver, but again, we're able to get that light attack with the one-handed moveset and catch our opponent maybe just a little bit more quickly than they were expecting, and we celebrate again with the Exalted Flesh. So moving on, we have uh, one of the other players from earlier. They are going to be using some spells in this case, which are a little bit more scary on the heavy roll. They also have the Nagakiba, which has just a ton of range and is going to poise break me every time, so it's a little bit scary. Here we go for a little bit of wave dashing, and here they pull out Spinning Slash, and we can just see how deadly that is against a build like this. We go for Giant Hunt, which we did run on this for a short period of time, but, uh, you know, I liked Lion's Claw a little bit better, and I think it's a little bit more lore accurate. Uh, I don't know. You can tell me in the comments if I'm wrong. But they do plot Spinning Slash another time, and we escape with just a fraction of our HP left. So that was a, a nice duel there, and a good one to come out on top against. And here we have the final duel of the showcase, and this is going to be a player running what looks like a pretty strong setup. The Guardian Sword Spear is a phenomenal weapon, and having offhand claws is going to be kind of interesting. So they're able to come in with a running poke. We will also notice that they're doing almost no damage. So that's one of the benefits with this player is uh, had they been doing a normal amount of damage, I think I would have lost for sure. But we're able to get the blood loss proc and they're at pretty low health at this point. So uh, again, you will note that I'm rolling as little as possible and we do manage to just kind of bait them into an attack and catch them with the giant hunk. As always, if you made it this far, I just wanted to say thank you so much for your support. Appreciate y'all sticking around. And I had so much fun with this build, especially the intro. Those are really fun moments. Also, for some backstory, this idea originated because Iced Estes, another content creator, was hanging out in my Twitch chat and mentioned that they ran into somebody who had a typo in their name for a Guts cosplay, and it was just the word gut. And I thought that a, you know, bigger gut or more rotund version of guts would be just a, a funny build to create. So uh, shout out to Ice Estes there for kind of the inspiration for this build. And yeah, that's all I've got to say. So I hope you have a good one.